yeah hi everyone um welcome to this session so we're going to be talking basically about how to navigate your classroom as a student so um things you need is on your on your mobile device you need a google workspace google classroom app uh, to run effectively it's, it's, it's more user friendly on the app than on your browser on your phone <coughs> And you could just go to your Play Store or App Store to download search. Um, then you could um, also use your system. So I'm going to be training us on how to navigate the classroom with our system. So um, first thing is you have to have a browser. So most times we have browsers that um, that are either in. We have browsers like uh, Edge, Chrome, Firefox. You, you see web and all that so it depends on which one you're using but i my favorite is actually either google chrome or edge uh depending on what you want to use it for but yeah i use both of them more um so for that purpose um for this purpose of for the purpose of this class i'm going to be teaching us using google chrome so first thing is you are going to might have received an email from your teacher or you might have received an email from your boss that you should join a class. So there are three ways to join a class. The first way is to, so you can see this invitation. Um, so this is an submitted invitation from uh, Google Classroom. So your invitation usually looks like this. Uh, it says, um, hello, Ipolo, our manager has invited, invited to the class Google Classroom and um, this is a class invite. So you click on this button and it takes you directly there. The second way is to, receive a link to your email i mean to the class directly and so what it just does is uh, it's uh, maybe your boss says hi there uh, you're invited to be a student in, in in my class can you use this link to join the class so that's another way to actually join a class then the third way is to go to your browser and click on classroom.google.com so yes if we click on this link it's going to take you directly to this environment and tell you to join the class so that was the first way so the first way we saw that um, let me, let's click on the link so we saw that if you click on this link it takes us to this environment so yeah you are to join or you join here so the third way is what we are going to use to connect which is generally the hardest way clicking on the buttons are easier so once you click on this, you see the class, join class or create a class. So you're going to join the class. So it comes here <clears throat> and what it does is it asks you for your class code. So every class that is created has what you call an enrollment code. So the class code is going to be usually alphanumeric. So if you paste it there, it, it will have come in your mail or text or whatever it was used to send you and um, click on that, put, put, put it there and join the class. So this way you've been, you've had the three ways of joining the classes and yet yeah, you get to your environment. So my teacher, before I came in, my teacher has already posted a few things. Now the, my teacher has designed this classroom for students not to be able to make announcements. So everything you see on your stream are called announcements. So first, let me give us an overview. So we have the stream. As a student, you have three bars where you can navigate. We have the stream, we have the classwork, and we have the people. So the stream is where you see notifications uh, over and over again about, or you see announcements. So what we call them in Google Classroom is a call announcement. So you see an announcement, and the teacher said, um, welcome to the class. And maybe he wants you to, it allows you to comment on every announcement it makes. So it's, uh, you could just reply and say, thank you, sir. Or map. So, and you click on a button and it creates your comment. Now, that's it. This header is just um, for how the design was, the classroom was designed, the colors that is uh, dependent on your teacher, actually. Then we have the upcoming events. So, these are assignments. I will get to that in a bit. So, under your class works, we have what you call topics and assignments or uh, whatever is assigned to you so on topics teachers use topics to be able to design uh, to teach students more effectively they use it in a way that um, students can actually learn 
more i mean in a better in a more structured manner so your um your teacher would have created topics on ground but you don't see the topics until it posts an assignment a material or whatever so whatever it is you can always come and check for documents here and see what you're looking for so here he is talking about an introduction that's a topic and is access right a presentation so i can view the assignment and do it but it has been assigned to me then um furthermore you can see that topics are just arranged here so uh yes when i clicked on this introduce yourself it created this chat room so you can also chat on a particular topic students are allowed to chat on a topic but you have to click on that topic and um, once you click on it it's uh sir i need to understand this so also um your teachers could use this as a way of people actually um reaching out to each other so as a as, as, as a as a um as a teacher if imagine you want your students to have some sort of introduction to each other you can allow them to once they once you create a topic and they click on it they can comment particularly on that topic so we also have um so let's see the assignment now once you as uh, you're assigned a task or an, uh, you're given an assignment as a student the first thing you're going to see is you click on the assignment it takes you to the header write a presentation this particular header does not have description so there's no need it's quite basic introduce yourself and write a presentation now you can see that there are 14 points so this tells you how many points this particular task is given um then you can private comments private comments is just you reaching out to your, your teacher personally and they see it on their own dashboard and uh, refer back to you then your work so once you're done with what it, whatever it is you can add or create and mark as done so once your mark is done it tells it tells you that um this in you are sometimes you're allowed to on some meets but depending on your teacher it might not it might not allow that so yeah so that is how assignment works you're given an assignment you carry it out and um, and uh and submit or return so uh once you do that you can go back to the main stream and let's continue so yeah like i said as a student once you see this you'll see all all of your activities then you could also view your work so we have the view your work we have three buttons just beneath the main buttons view your work calendar and uh, class drive so once you view your work this shows you a drop down of everything you've done so if your lecturer has given you like 15 20 different assignments you could you'll see all of them listed one by one and you see the status you've handed it in it tells you if you want to view details you can further view details it just takes you back to the the, the, the assignment platform then um you could also see whichever so if you have more reports you've been given you have assigned you have handed i mean uh returned and you have missing so once this is done so return is when your teacher marks your script and returns your score so because you, you can see that you don't have any all the only ones you can see is the one you handed in and there are no buttons for that so you have the assigned you have the returned and you have the missing so when you miss a deadline that is where you see so these are ways you can use to track all the assignment that has been given to you as a student then you uh furthermore you have google calendar so your teacher could use the calendar within here to create events that are specific to your class so once that is done you'll be able to um to see it on your end so once you click on the calendar it takes you there now note that calendar from here is just giving you access to the classroom um, calendar has been created so each classroom has a calendar created automatically so once that is done so you can see the google classroom um, training once i click once i on click on all these other ones it goes so if your teacher had set up a meeting what will happen is what you're going to see is you're going to see that the 
the meeting will be stored under the Google Classroom training and we can reach out from there going forward. Then um, back to the class, we have the class folder. So class folders are just where, um, we, I mean, all the places that we store our, our materials. So most times, whatever you put here can be visible to others. Um, so once your teacher creates your courses and all that, it's sent to you. <clears throat> And um, you can actually view them, basically. So all the materials in your class will be stored in this folder, as as long as it relates to you. Then, furthermore, yeah, that's it. Then, last part of this navigation will be people. So um, the people are you have the teachers and the students. So I'm not seeing myself because I am the student, or like teachers, students cannot see people that have not been. They have not accepted the invitation. They can only see the people that have in, been invited and accepted the uh, they've accepted the the invite to join your class. So all students will be listed beneath the teachers. All teachers will be listed above the students. So one thing is for free versions of Google Workspace, you can only um, use up to three hundred people, while the other one we can walk around that. So I think that um, we've been able to go really around the basics of the Google Classroom and um, I hope that um, I'll see you soon. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe.